company that they started out actually more of a, as an event experience company, which they still are an experience company, just taking it to a completely different level. So I met Paul actually uh, a couple years ago, I think, at a media event. Oh, we, it was great meeting Paul, and um, since then we're, we're you know, talking about lots of different stuff. So um, I want to welcome Paul, and he'll talk about his company, Tangu. Well, I'm Paul from Tangu. Thanks for the intro, Richard. I'm here with my partner, uh, John and Tristan. And yeah, we're really excited to be here. I mean, what a great event, awesome crowd. And uh, what an interesting topic, the innovation of food. Now, with Tangu, we don't really innovate food per se. We innovate more the purpose on why people get together through food. Bit about my story. Uh, I was born in Mexico, so anything that is spicy, I love. And you'll see that my roots actually are super spread out, so I'll eat almost anything, which kind of disqualifies me for being a foodie because I'm not really picky at all. I love food, but I'm really kind of like pretty casual with food. And I try to cook, but I, I, I often fail. So it really starts to narrow me down and as far as my relationship goes with food, as someone who uses food as a way to socialize. I think that's uh, one of the hidden powers of food. Uh, I grew up actually in Vancouver, and uh, I went to UBC. And when I went on exchange, I went to Barcelona, which is a magical city. I love that place. And one thing about their culture is that it's very social there. They'll go for dinner at like 11 p.m. and like they'll be done at like 2 a.m., which is insane. And I found that the way that they kind of treated their dining experience, it was really around a reason to get together and have a meaningful conversation, which I am really, really passionate about. So that was a bit of inspiration for myself. And this as I was finishing up school, uh, yeah, I started with Tangu, and I guess Today, Tangu is known, it's, it's an app, it's, it's technology. So what we do is we recommend dining experiences all based off your mood and what specific social experience you're looking for. So we're really passionate about actually bringing people closer together to something we call a real world social experience. So how do we get people from online to offline? And how do we use food and cafes and restaurants and all these amazing social hubs as a way to actually get closer together with your dates your business partners or your friends. So who's had the you know the, the situation where you're looking for a date night and you're looking for somewhere adventurous, romantic, cozy, all these feelings, but they're hard to materialize because there aren't really any filters that you can filter place by these kinds of emotions. Likewise, if you have a group outing, who who doesn't want to have an epic outing? I wonder what's a great place to celebrate my birthday? Like what spots in Vancouver are best known for birthdays? Again, it's not, it's, it's not a dollar sign, it's not a star rating, it's, it's around an emotion, so how do you materialize that? And lastly, you know, if you are on business and you have like a last minute uh, corporate outing and you gotta find a place that's a quick bite, uh, it's classy, it's somewhere that's impressive, and you gotta find it right away. If you go on Google, you're gonna be in for a heck of a Google search, right? So how do you streamline this and make it really simple? So with us, uh, a bit of our, our background, it was already alluded to that, yeah, I, I started working uh, with Van City Buzz, one of our partners, and we started off doing events. And we actually started right next door with Mark Brand. He was sort of the first person who took a bit of a leap of faith on us. <laughs> and the way we started it was that, essentially, the problem was is that we find planning really stressful. We're always on the go, it's so hard to do. And I said, well, why are people not having fun trying to have fun when they plan their outings? And the problem is that people eventually just go to their go-to spots. You know, you've got five or six spots that you go to all the time. And that's okay, because it's a safe bet, but does it really fit the exact experience you want? Does it fit your mood? Eh, well, it's good enough. Well, there's so many incredible restaurants in Vancouver that I think it's really a crime to not go and explore. But the trick is you've got to make it easy. If it's not easy, people won't bother. So we said, how can we make that simple? Well, with us, we didn't have technology back then. We didn't have sorry, we didn't have any technology people. We were all sales guys, so we had to do it all by hand. And, the, and I love events, and I love uh, connecting people. So we started off something called a resto cocktail hop. And the basic idea was, is like, how can I make it so that I can guide you on an amazing social outing in a way where you click one button and that's it, where you don't have to bother waiting for bills. You don't have to bother waiting in line, waiting for a reservation, being like, hey, where do you want to go? I don't know, where do you want to go? Everything just set for you. So it was essentially a progressive dinner where uh, I had a bit of a social twist. So you'd pay once online, we'd handpick about uh, two to three restaurants and bars in the area around a certain theme. And after you bought your ticket online, 
you just show up. That was it. There's no waiting, no reservations, no ambiguity, because we actually would uh, handpick the restaurants ourselves before. You'd show up, there'd be an area waiting for you. you, you would be, there'd be 30 other people to socialize with, and you could just walk out like a boss. There'd be no, uh, no paying, right? It'd be all taken care of. So again, everything that made an outing kind of stressful was eliminated, and that was actually really cool for us. That was something we learned a lot. So yeah, in the end, we got a lot of positive results. We put a thousand people through the program, and we learned a lot, and we talked about innovation, and innovation really is learning day by day by day, because your business changes. Like, we had 30 events, and every event started to change a bit, because you learn. That's an amazing thing about entrepreneurship and innovation. We noticed that people are a lot more energetic, they socialize more, and they share more of their experience online when they're completely taken care of. And that was a really interesting thing to actually see, that once people can focus on less thinking and more experiencing, then really cool things happen. So we got some really excellent media momentum. So I'm very much in the media world, so that might have helped a little bit. But uh, also, yeah, getting to uh, create a concept that really resonated with foodies, people that wanted to socialize, the fact we have that stigma about being a no fun city, which I totally disagree with. Uh, that helped us out, though, as a way to connect people to food. And uh, we had about 25 publications the first year in 2013. Uh, and then, yeah, we had a lot of interesting partners on board. We got some of the bigger groups on board. We got a lot of the independents. And the, the concept really resonated with them on how can we make ourselves more of a social experience. How can you, and, 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 I mean, who doesn't like groups, right? So that really helped us a lot as well. And then we hit a bit of a barrier where we realized these events are great. We've got some amazing learnings. But how do we grow faster? <laughs> how do you really scale your product? It's always a problem with a lot of entrepreneurs is how do you scale and how do you do without having to hire way too many people, which can be very costly. So with us, we had to go back to the drawing boards. And I mean, some things we learned was that for doing 30 events total, which is really just two a month, um, we have to use technology. <laughs> We've got to find a way to leverage technology. And one thing we also noticed as well was um, we looked at the industry. What do people want these days? Well, three main things. They want things now. They want to personalize. And they want it to be done in a simple interface, again, in a really simple way. So we said to ourselves, what other companies are doing things like this in other industries? You see Songza, Tinder, Uber, that's dating, transportation, and uh, music. And they're doing really well in the industries, and they hit those three principles really well. So they use technology, and they hit them really great. And I said, well, what about in hospitality and restaurants? I mean, the existing platforms are okay, but they're a little bit cluttered, and I would say the culture is a bit off, right? Restaurant reviews get a bit of a stigma. People don't really focus on well, especially the social stuff. So how can we make it seamless and really get to what counts? So we actually, I mean, you talk about a deadline. Uh, we had a deadline to pitch our business in front of 300 investors and entrepreneurs right across the street at a place called Launch Academy. It's a bit of a, a startup hub. And the night before we realized, yeah, we've got to change our model. We have to innovate. Um, we have to be in line with the trends. And again, we're a tech company, so we should be looking more towards tech. So we pivoted the model, and two things we observed as well from the events was that people came last minute, and people were always very spontaneous. So how do we make these events cater to last minute and spontaneity? Impossible. We had to innovate. So then we developed uh, Tango again, which was uh, what you see right now. And again, it's a way to seamlessly tell something how you're feeling, what your occasion is, and get a very personalized and instant recommendation. So actually, Richard over here, if he wasn't the amazing uh, food blogger that he is, and he didn't have the know-how of finding this fantastic spot, he might be like, if I'm planning this event, I need a place that is wide open, so it's good for mingling, and it's casual, and has some character, right? That would have been a heck of a Google search again, right? So how do you find a place that's known for these experiential things? We call it an experiential filter. So he'd go on and say he's out for a, a group outing. He'd probably put mingling in casual as places he wants to go to. And you'll see lost and found pops up. And under casual and mingling, they're actually rated for being really good for those instances, right? So we're looking at kind of putting a different lens on cafes and restaurants around what experience would they best fulfill and how do people rate them for that experience. So I find it to be a lot more relevant for helping you plan that casual mingling event. So one thing that our restaurants have told us a lot about is that they want to differentiate. And when you leave it, leave it to just the star ratings, it gets pretty tough. You know, if a guy across the street is a half star more than you, you as a consumer who wants this casual mingling outing, like how's it going to help you make a better decision? So it's very hard to differentiate through stars. And we said, well, how can we bring out your story, your personality, 
is so it's so much more than just the quality. I think that's a basic threshold, but we go beyond that where we want to give you again a social personality and a way to be found online through ways that you make people's social audience better. It's that simple. Uh, photography is a huge thing. We found that a lot of restaurants and cafes don't have good photos. A lot of the photos you see online from people's iPhones are you know, food shots, and that's totally cool, but they don't say much about the experience. So we actually found that some of our, our partners that have professional photographs uh, have gotten 50% more engagement on their profiles. So more people are actually clicking them through their visual aesthetics, and also places that have great moods that are a great match for who they are also get a lot more engagement, three times more phone calls. So we're already seeing that in those first five seconds you have as a restaurateur to impress someone, you've got to be visual and relevant. And that's exactly what we want to do. We want to empower our restaurateurs to really connect with consumers in a way that's important to them, in a way that matches you know, their social goals. And so yeah, we've launched our app. It's really exciting. It launched exactly a month ago. So it's on iOS. So if you have, you have an iPhone, it's just Tangu, like the dance, two O's. And uh, if you don't have an iPhone, that's okay. Android is coming. In the meantime, there's a web version, so just tangu.ca. You can also use it on the web. And yeah, we've got an, a stellar team. And one thing about startups is that the team is the most important thing. So uh, I, I do not want to take all the credit. I didn't build any of this. We have our tech team that's busy coding now, so full credit to them. And John and Tristan here are the guys who uh, mainly engage with the restaurants and learn about them every day. So I'm blessed to have an awesome team. And you can catch us on Dragons then this season. Uh, they don't tell you when, unfortunately. It can be any time between October 15th and April 15th. So go figure. But we did shoot it last April. And yeah, we're really excited to blow this up, not just in Vancouver, but also across Canada and hopefully beyond that. So on that note, thank you for listening. Paul from Tangu.